Dies ist eine Titan aus Spitzer von einem Porsche 997 GT3 RS. I mean, this is a titanium exhaust tip from a Porsche 997 GT3 RS. And you're probably not going to like how I'm going to fix it. But I guess we'll find out on this episode of the Fabrication Series. Peekaboo. Yep. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this piece here. I'm going to show you something. Yeah, what we're looking at is right down there. Let me grab my little pointer here. This stuff right here. Kind of gray, hazy, maybe a little ashy, if you will. That is actually titanium dioxide. And if you didn't know, that is that white powdery stuff that forms when you fail to shield titanium from the atmosphere at certain temperatures. And that white powdery titanium dioxide is literally the final stage in uh, oxidation for titanium. It, it actually would basically prevent you from completely penetrating through on something like this. And also, funny enough, the uh, number one use for titanium dioxide is actually uh, in white paint. So, yeah. Fun fact for you. Thanks for uh, Chris at Unatinium Welding for teaching me that many years ago. But either way, the fact that it's present on here means very specifically that it was not shielded when it was created or when it was built. So these welds on the inside here, they were not, you know, they were done without any kind of shielding. Also, if you look here, the different shades or coloring or the different stages of the oxidation on the part itself would indicate that this was not shielded either when it was welded, which basically means in a nutshell that the metal is already basically wasted it's damaged it's oxidized whatever is in this part is in this part now it's just it's at that stage so there is virtually nothing we can do at this point even if we shield it on the backside again it would not do anything because the metal is already you know suffered its its fate from not being shielded to begin with so uh, even though it's kind of one of those crappy situations where you're just like I know better than this and I can do better than this uh, it's a waste of time. So all we're really gonna do is squeeze this sucker right back together and refuse this weld very lightly as to not completely destroy all of the metal underneath there. So I know it's a uh, one of those crappy details and of course all of you aerospace professionals that don't understand that this part it goes on the road and it goes vroom vroom and it doesn't go shoo shoo through the air or pew pew into powder sp in outer space you know so um, I know that this is not a typical practice for titanium, but since it is already effectively destroyed, the owners just want it put back together. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to put the thing back together and uh, it'll hold until the next time where it doesn't hold. And as much as I hate to say that, that's just the way it's going to go. So let's get this cleaned up as best as we can and then we'll fuse it all back together. Step one, remove all dirt, oils, grease, soot, and everything else that's attached to this part that would technically contaminate it more or make it very, very difficult for me to do. Uh, the product I'm going to use initially here is called Crud Cutter. It's a kind of universal cleaner and uh, it works extremely well. I am not sponsored by them. I just use this stuff. It cleans literally everything and it's non-toxic and biodegradable and whatever. Step number two is to bust out the uh, red surface prep pad or a Scotch-Brite and hit it with some acetone. This will actually scrub out a lot of the areas that I need to have perfectly clean and basically prepped and ready to go. Now, I don't need to saturate this in acetone or anything else like that. I just needed to get into the tight spaces where possibly the crud cutter or the actual microfiber towel did not reach. And finally, step number three is to blast it with a little bit of some flame. Now, what this is going to do is get any areas where, like, the Scotch-Brite might have left a little sliver or something behind, or maybe the microfiber towel had, like, some lint that got pulled off or whatever in some of these crevices, and it also burns off any other kind of impurities on the surface. Again, pretty straightforward. The first step before fully welding is to apply several tacks. Now I'm using the Prime Weld TIG 225X and it's set to 55 amps and my number 16 BBW cup is pumping out at about 40 CFH. 
My tungsten of choice is 332nd laser tungsten because it welds every single metal on every single machine. And of course, this is all genuine CK Worldwide components, which you can buy everything I'm using here at weldmetalsonline.com. And if you use TFS10 at checkout, you'll be supporting this channel and helping a lot of other people along the way. Now, since the Prime Weld has a low amp range of only 10 amps, I'm stepping on the pedal slowly to initiate the arc before ramping it up to get the metal molten. Now, as soon as I see both sides of the crack blend together, I get out of it. And getting out of it is basically fancy welding lingo for taking my foot off the pedal quickly. Now, since titanium is a very sensitive metal, a post-flow cycle is required while the metal cools. Now, post-flow is also fancy welding lingo for keeping the torch in place after you terminate the arc so that the gas that is still flowing keeps covering your part as it cools down, which prevents oxidation. That's a very long-winded explanation for saying, just don't pick up the torch after you've finished your weld. Keep it in place. Post-flow. Now, as soon as all the tacks were laid, the fusion can begin. I'm using the term fusion here because that's basically all I'm doing. I'm melting the existing weld back together with no filler. This is kind of like an autogenous pass, as in a weld without filler, but there's already a weld here, so it's more of just like a fusion pass. Now, there really is no set amperage to doing this. There's also no muscle memory. There's no preset method to do every time. There's no settings to make it all work. There's no waving the torch around like some kind of magic wand. There's nothing like that. All I'm really doing here is watching the bead combine into one molten pool and adjusting my speed or my amps to get through it as quickly as possible. In short, my eyes are basically telling my hand and my foot what to do. Now this just takes experience, which comes from practice. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Alrighty. Nothing too spectacular, right? Of course, we had to burn them a little bit hotter because they were existing welds, which is effectively thicker than the material than they were originally welded to. So that obviously caused us to get some oxidation, that titanium dioxide there on the back. See that white ring around there? Looks like cool whip. Yeah, that stuff. Anyway, I'm confident it'll hold. I don't really like the fact that I had to do it that way. Again, if you skipped over the uh, intro where I explained all of this, if I put this into a purge chamber or anything else like that, it would be just about as effective as doing it out in the open because it, the metal is already contaminated. So, yeah. I'm sure I'll hear in the comments from you, uh, you know, aerospace professionals, you know, about how welding this titanium is all wrong, which is why the title of this video has something to do with you getting mad about me doing this, but that's okay. Argue about it all you want. It only generates more, uh, you know, comments and stuff like that for the algorithm, and uh, I appreciate it. So, until next time. I charged 80 bucks to fix that.